Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we're looking at the Visual Studio Code extension Claude Dev. Uh, it is an AI agent that is capable of building software. Um, we've looked at it in a previous video already and built something fairly simple. And today I wanted to dig into the code to just see how it works briefly. It is a large project but also to see whether we can make modifications to it. So first of all, do download it. It's by Sayud, Sayud Rizman, uh, butchering that, I'm sorry. Uh, it's been really helpful uh, when you download it, it installs to Visual Studio Code. It opens a, it has an icon on the side right here and opens a sidebar in which you can tell it to do things like, please make a snake game. Now this is different than just running ChatGPT on the side. ChatGPT, typically you ask it questions. You know, here's my code, why isn't this working? This error is popping up, how do I fix it? For AI agents, what's going to happen is you're going to just give it an objective. I want you to build a game. I want you to build this app. I want you to do these things in very abstract ways. You don't need to say, I want you to use this package. I want you to do exactly this and then write a function that does this. Claude um, or other AI agents are supposed to be able to then plan something out, uh, ask you to approve um, the next steps, and then it'll go through the next step, then the next step, then the next step. Um, in theory, it sounds great. You, It will offload all of the babysitting you have to normally do with ChatGPT to get uh, really good results. Now, Claude Dev isn't the first one to do this, but uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet has just gotten so much better at writing code that this agent is uh, way more impressive than it was a month ago or two months ago. Now, the goal today is to see whether we can make changes. This project is MIT licensed. And so uh, where I was thinking is I saw this application by Spellbook. It's called Spellbook Associate and it's going we're the first legal tech AI agent. I question how good and how practical it actually is, but it's all of the same ideas that uh, you tell it to do some basic work and it will plan out the next steps and then automate, automatically make those next steps. So instead of please review this section of this contract, you might just say, please write a contract for my new uh, application on the App Store. Uh, just like before, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, approve different steps and, and uh, watch it go. And it looks, it, it feels very much like Claude Dev, except for Microsoft Office and Word files. Now, my thought is I wanted to see how well this would actually work. If we make some modifications here, sure, it's not going to run in Microsoft Office. It's not going to run with docx files. But if I use a bunch of plain text files or markdown files, I can get a gauge of um, how good it works, whether we can keep building it. And if it turns out to be amazing, you know, we could take this project and adapt it so that it does accept Microsoft Office files, that uh, PDF files, that we can do all of these things to push it along the way. Okay, so what I've done is I have actually downloaded the latest release and uh, created a folder and downloaded it right here so we can see these files. Uh, if you just give me a moment, I am going to open the folder. Oh, um, why is that? Oh, my mistake goes wrong folder. And we have everything here. So I'll zoom in. We'll close this up. Uh, we have all the files. 
The first thing I wanted to do is just go over how this uh, works overall. You will see that this is a project and there is a very distinct UI aspect of it. You know what, I, I think I prefer looking at it in the GitHub view. Um, and I will zoom one more level here. We have two folders. Uh, I like the web view UI. Uh, that's the easier part. Um, if we look at the source, you'll see that it is basically a React project. How Claude Dev looks, all of these buttons and such, are based on this React page. So there are CSS files and then this TSX file. Now, of course, uh, this base file will have very limited um, code. It's just the app. But as required, various React components will show up. So this is a chat view. And if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see the HTML that, uh, well, pseudo HTML that is that it's going to look like. Um, there's a lot of uh, functions and, and um, d dynamic build of the HTML. So if you haven't used React uh, or if you're a novice like I am, um, this is all Greek. But the idea is that depending on what you need, you'll have certain, uh, certain choices made that will make that will change how the HTML looks. Now, frankly, I don't care about any of that. Um, if we were to build this out, say in Microsoft Office, we wouldn't be able to reuse uh, web views built for Visual Studio Code, not, not easily at least. The more interesting part is this. This is the logic that makes it tick. Uh, we have a few folders here that we could completely ignore. So test, for example, doesn't really matter. Uh, if we look at API, not surprising, they chose Anthropic, but also different ones. Now, Anthropic is just how it handles the API. Uh, we could, over time, just swap this out and uh, adapt it so that it, write, it works with Gemini or ChatGPT, whatever. The logic is primarily in this TypeScript file here. This is where the magic all is. And this is where I think I need to go back into Visual Studio Code so that we could see, we could get a better view of this. Okay. First and foremost, we have this system prompt. And this is the easiest change that we can do and one that would have a pretty significant effect on how it works. But it says, you know, you are Claude Dev, a highly skilled software developer, blah, blah, blah. Here's what you can do. You can read and analyze code. You can uh, execute CLI commands, blah, 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 and various rules. Okay. Uh, some of these uh, are very practical. So that your working directory, um, you know, how how you can uh, create CLI commands that are relevant, uh, but also some of these less necessary pieces. Never start your responses with affirmations like certainly, okay, sure, great. Uh, these are, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, design choices rather than critical pieces like the above. Uh, we keep going objective, system information, blah, blah, blah. More importantly, how this works is that Claude, as well as most of the other chatbots nowadays, uh, have a feature called function calling, or in Claude's case, tool use. Uh, what you can do here is basically def define a number of tools that Claude can use. Uh, in short, it's saying that Claude can respond saying, please run this tool, and here are some of the parameters you might want to enter into it. Uh, in this case, uh, their example here from Anthropic, uh, you have a chatbot, but it also has a function that's get weather. 
So when Claude responds, please use the tool get weather, and I'm saying this not conversationally, but uh, in a specific format, um, your code is supposed to pick up that Claude wants you to run the get weather function, and Claude will pass some sort of string to you. You run that function, and then you might return some sort of response to Claude, or you can cut it out. Uh, in our case, you will see that um, the functions, the tools that Claude can do, are pretty broad and important. First, you have execute command. So you can, um, you can give Claude the ability to run a command line uh, command. That means that Claude might say, please run this on CMD. Again, I'm saying this conversationally, but it will return, please use the execute command tool and here is what I want you to execute. Um, and if we look for the function further down, you're going to see this function. Uh, of course, if it isn't proper uh, code, it's going to say, you know, missing some value, can't execute the command. But if uh, it is able to run and the user says, yes, please run it, uh, it's going to do a bunch of things to actually run that command. So it's going to uh, put it into a pipe and, and run the command. That's tool number one. If we go down this list, you're going to see uh, list files at the top level, uh, list files recursively. Uh, the idea is to give Claude Dev access to all the files you have. Hopefully you have very descriptive names. Uh, view source code, interesting. I didn't see that one the first time I saw this. Uh, read file, this is where it starts getting pretty easy to understand. It has to be able to see the list of files, read the file, make changes by writing to the file, and potentially also ask follow-up questions and uh, submit the final result to you. Just a series of a handful of options for Claude to, um, to respond with. And every single time, it's going to either execute a command, ask a follow-up question, check out the files, or uh, make some sort of changes to the files. If we want to make changes to this, uh, it's pretty simple. So uh, I could call it, you are Claude Attorney, a highly skilled uh, attorney with extensive knowledge in uh, drafting contracts, policies, uh, analyzing uh, regulations, and best practices. Probably not my best piece of writing here. Um, we can, of course, make modifications here. We should make modifications here, but for the sake of brevity, I'm going to ignore that. And if we go down to the tools, uh, some of these are irrelevant. Uh, execute command, completely irrelevant. But for us, for, our, for my purpose, really all I need to do is list the files, allow them to read the file and write to the file. So I can leave this mostly unchanged. Chances are I may want to change these descriptions and instructions so that uh, Claude will not be confused about who he is. Um, but you can see we can make very minor modifications to get this proof of concept running. If I make uh, some changes to these prompts, remove a couple tools, I should be able to take a number of legal documents formatted as text files and pull off similar things to Spellbook. Again, this would be a proof of concept to be really useful. You know, no lawyer is really using Visual Studio Code. They're all in Microsoft Office using Word documents. So it's not perfect by any means, but it is a great proof of concept to see how Claude reacts. And if we want to, we could switch out to Gemini, which I think would do better in this role, in a legal tech role. Um, but of course, we have to test it out. 
Okay, so let's move forward and say I spent an hour, two hours, three hours cleaning all of this up. What is the next step? Well, if we go back into Claude Dev, uh, there are instructions way at the bottom about how to run this manually. Because for the most part, users will download it straight from the marketplace and click install and, and get past that. Uh, for us, uh, we've already cloned the repository. We didn't use Git. Uh, we are we actually opened it already in VS Code. So I think the next piece is we have to install the dependencies. So uh, let me just go into command prompt here. And CD into our folder. It's going to run here. And uh, Claude will need to install a whole bunch of things. So I kind of wish I did this earlier. I'm just going to pause the video for a moment. Now that uh, we have installed everything, uh, we go back into VS Code. Uh, and what we're going to do is debug this. Oh, uh, let's see what the errors are. No problems have been detected. Very odd. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll try this again. Oh, okay. Let's, let's take a look here. I wonder what the issue is, but let's, let's run anyways and see. How we do. Okay, so you will see that, oh, see, we have an error, but the good news is uh, Claude Dev is, we're seeing something here. We have our uh, extension installed. It's running into an error. And what I think I'm going to do is... Uh, Take a look here. Don't think these are related. I wonder what the issue is. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day here. We have the general idea of where we wanna go. This is kind of debugging and I suspect it might just be that I have too many extensions running and I might have done something stupid along the way. Uh, but we may follow this up further as I decide to make more modifications. Uh, thanks for watching. I, I hope you found it helpful to actually see broken down how Claude Dev actually works. It's, it's quite simple in theory. Uh, there's obviously thousands of lines of code um, in the project, but uh, what it comes down to is still talking to the AI chatbot, but giving it uh, a set of discrete options of how to continue and a pretty extensive uh, system prompt about how to, how to behave and when to use different tools. Um, Please stay tuned next week. We will either work on a separate project or we might keep working on this one and see how far we can get. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Bye.